This is Shuffle, your backstage pass to Northeast Ohio's independent music scene. I'm Amanda Rabinowitz. Here's to finding out the answers To all the questions you just don't know how to ask Here's to figuring out the reason My guest this week is 19-year-old Northeast Ohio musician Ava Preston, who's quickly rising the ranks in the jazz scene. We started our conversation talking about her biggest gig to date, performing for a crowd of 4,000 at the Monterey Jazz Festival in California this past summer. She was part of the Next Generation Jazz Orchestra. Before the main event, she also sang for some of her musical heroes. So we walk into the gala, right? All 20, like, students in, like, the foyer or, like, the opening. It's, it's Herbie Hancock and it's Christy McBride, Diane Reeves. I about fell over when I saw Diane Reeves, but, I mean, they were really nice people. It was so much fun to play for them. It's like a handoff to the next generation. That's what they were telling me. And they were excited to see where jazz goes. So I think that's the biggest compliment anybody can give you. The best part was probably learning that jazz is a very small world and music in general is a very small world. You're gonna run into people again and again and again. And the most important thing is you do it for the music. That's, that's what I learned. Everything is for the music. It's not for the ego, it's for the music. Fall and pray to the illusion. Talking to you is like a game that I can't win. All these years is such a long time. God, I thought that we were close, but then again, I don't even know the real you. The conversation's mostly guesswork in my head. Wait for my I want you to go back to when you were really, really little, because that's when you first discovered that you had perfect pitch. And it started with some Disney DVDs. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. From what my mom says, I used to rewind the Disney DVDs on a player and teach myself all the songs. When I started singing them and when I started doing piano with a piano teacher, he recognized that I had perfect pitch, that I could hear the notes and understand what they were and name them, no matter what pitch it is. And you were what, like four years old? Yeah, three or four, yeah. Three or four years old. And then that developed, you moved on from Disney DVDs, didn't you? (laughs) I initially found jazz in, okay, so you remember those iPods? I would scroll through just the music library that was on there, and I found Diana Krall, and that was my introduction to jazz. I'm like, whoa, what what is this? this is awesome. And so I just started listening to it. I didn't start really seriously singing jazz till about seven. But yeah, I mean, jazz has always been in my life. Ella Fitzgerald too, right? Yeah, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan. Um, I found Carmen McRae a little later. What was it like trying to emulate them? Difficult. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Difficult at first. I mean, especially the like the scat singing. But now I feel like I've really improved on that front, like improvising. It's one of the most fun parts of jazz to me, honestly, improvising, because that's, that's it's music about freedom, and it, it's very represented in the way that you play the music. Footsteps that echo in the hallway, the memory of a moment that's passed, and the words that I never could say. I see you standing, reflected in the sky. I know that you also went to a lot of songwriting camps. Is that how you kind of honed your craft? The first one I went to is what inspired me to write songs. I did this songwriting camp with Steve Bogart at the Civic, and they told me to write a song, and so I wrote it. They're like, this is good. I want you to come down to Nashville. So I did, and I met a lot of mentors down there. Um, I went to spring training, the songwriting camp, and it's just, it it sparked something in me. It's like, I got to write. That's what I have to do. I know in school, one of your favorite subjects was social studies, and that influenced your songwriting. Yes, I've always loved history, and I was learning about you know, Malala and things like the Holocaust, a lot of wars, a lot of terrorism. And that really influenced me to write a song about genocide is the way I put it when I was um, 11. 
I wrote that song Ashes just to be a message of hope that there's that there's something out there that is bad, but there's something out there that's gonna guide you, help you, whether it's a religious figure or just, you know, somebody who helps you on the street. Just there's there's something out there that's good. And it seems like the obstinate voices of wrong are the only ones ever heard. So you lie and you wait as your soul starts to fade, losing faith in this world. Oh, but I believe that your hope for a change will shine bright for millions of eyes to see. And you wrote a song about opioid addiction. For my generation, everybody's affected by the opioid crisis. Every single one of us knows a brother, a sister, a friend, a parent, an uncle, anybody who's influenced by opioids. And and it's so unfortunate that it's that widespread. And I decided to write that song as a sort of wake up call. Like, these people are hurting. We need to help them, not try and shun them to the outskirts of society because one day it will affect you. Drink until you pass out. Smoke until you those big topics that you've taken on your songwriting, Toy Soldier, is about bullying. Bullying is very, very near and dear to me because I was bullied heavily for about seven years. It was by everybody. It was difficult to feel like, and this is a common occurrence I've found for a lot of artists and creatives, you just don't fit in. You don't fit the mold. And this was a very homogeneous community in general. It was very difficult, but I feel like it made me the person who I am today, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it over. I gave it a shot. What more can I want? There's nothing left now. And those little toy soldiers that you sell when you're older, cause you want to move on. When your play days are done, be the person you should have become. And I'm left broken and in pieces and parts of myself, hoping someday I'll learn how to fix them. You know, we talked a little bit about, you know, some of the camps and songwriting camps that you've been to. And you mentioned one of the best is right here in Northeast Ohio. Tri-C Jazz Fest Academy director Dominic Farinacci, who's your mentor. Yeah. Can you um, talk a little bit about that? Tri-C is honestly one of the best camps that I've been to. The way it's organized and directed and the opportunities that we're given have really been like no other. We may not be the biggest camp or the most famous camp here in Cleveland, but There is so much love in that community. And everything I've learned about being a leader and figuring out how to do gigs, figuring out how to balance my schedule, how to just, you know, get through life in general, I've learned from there. And I've learned from my mentor, Dominic Farinacci. He's like a second father to me. Sometimes, like, we call him the jazz father in our circle of friends, but he's really been an influential person in my life. When Dominic Farinacci was your age, he went off to Juilliard in New York. Yeah. Do you plan to follow in his footsteps? I graduated May of 2023 from high school, but I did College Credit Plus with Tri-C, and I got an associate's degree um, before I graduated high school, and I'm finishing up my senior year in Kent. I'm applying to grad schools right now, and Juilliard is a very, very high contender, along with MSM and Miami Frost. Um, There's, and Berkeley, of course, there's just so many, there's so many great schools that, and I just want to throw my name in the hat and just 
see what comes out, you know? See who, who wants to, you know, teach me. That's Ava Preston. At ideastream.org slash shuffle, check out a fantastic article written by Shuffle producer Brittany Nader that includes photos and links. And we film this interview for Applause Performances, which is available to watch on demand via the PBS app. If you like what you hear, make sure you're following the Shuffle podcast. Give us a rating or write a review. We're open to feedback and guest ideas. Email us at shuffle at ideastream.org or find WKSU's Shuffle on Facebook. I'm Amanda Rabinowitz. Thanks for listening. 2 a.m. again, I want to down a cup of antifreeze. I never understood through all the static on your old TVs. It's the same size. I find to feed off a border like gold on the inside. 3 a.m. again, I want to douse myself in gasoline strike. Imagine burn up all the things you ever said to me. The temperature that that's a start, 104 and fall apart. Cold to the touch, but just close enough to try to tell what am 